It may not win today, gentlemen, but we'll have a good time. <laughs> The web fighter, the web tank. I didn't think it could get better. But it gets better with the barbarian. I think it gets better in some ways. This is awesome. Uh, I'm looking at the barbarian. Just I'm looking at it from the PHB and I'm thinking, hey, we're gonna tank. Let's get that D12 hit dice. That would be sweet. That's gonna help us out. When we rage, uh, yes, yes, give me some of that resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Love that. That's going to be sweet. Um, I'll take that rage, that extra damage on the rage, because adding flat damage to the whip when it's just a short, a tight 1d4 damage, that's going to work really well with that weapon. It's going to scale up. Like the fighter takes that dueling feat and just gets plus 2, but this scales up to 3 and 4 later on. That's awesome. Oh, we've pumped up our dexterity for this build because the whip's a finesse weapon. Danger sense, advantage on dexterity saving throws. Yeah, I'll take it. That sounds awesome. Unarmored defense. Oh, you're gonna be you're gonna be blasting your dexterity modifier anyway. Well, you can just make your AC ten plus your dex plus your constitution modifier. Twenty when you get them maxed out. I think that's that's doable. <laughs> It's possible, certainly. I mean, depending if you roll for stats, certainly depending on what your rolls are, um, you can still use a shield. If you get them maxed out, you're sitting on 22 all the time. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hang on a second. If you take this thing all the way to the end, the light at the end of the tunnel, your primal champion. It doesn't matter your path. That's just any barbarian. Your strength and constitution score is increased by four. Strength, we don't really care about, but Constitution, oh, that's going to bump up our unarmored defense by another two. So it's up to 24. When you get to level 20, your proficiency bonus is uh, up to six. So if you have that defensive duelist feat, your reaction consistently takes your AC to 30 every turn. Every turn if you're hit, you can just, I'm going to make it 30. That'll feel good. Um... 32 if you got a cleric or a paladin is willing to give you shield of faith. I don't think you're going to need it. Um, oh, it's so awesome. But looking through the PHP and I'm like, I don't think it's quite as good in some ways because boy, we're missing out on all those attacks. The fighter has so many attacks. You can really make up for that 1d4 damage with the whip by adding your, your ability modifier on every time. Superiority die when you hit. That's fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm like, ah, oh, the barbarian. We only get, we only get that extra attack. We only get two attacks, two attacks with the whip. What are we gonna really do with that? I don't really like berserker for this. We're opening our. So we want a tank. You know, we've already got that resistance. I don't want people having an advantage on me. I guess with that AC guards, but I don't really totem warrior. I don't know. I don't. It just doesn't speak to me for the whip tank for the bar, whip barbarian. Um, and then, and then, and then I looked. I should have looked earlier. We're going to have to go supplement for this. Xanathars. Um, let's take a look. What page do we want to look at here? The Path of the Ancestral Guardian. I like that it has Guardian in the name because we're wanting to tank with a whip and then we're Guardian. The Barbarian Ancestral Guardian Whip Tank. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's take a peek. Oh, what are we going to get with this thing? Um, third level, we get Ancestral Protectors. At sixth level, we get Spirit Shield. Uh, 2d8. Consult Spirits comes in at 10th. Spirit Shield goes to 3d8. 14th level, we get Vengeful Ancestors. And Spirit Shield goes to 4d8. What's this all about? Take a peek. Ancestral protectors. Starting when you choose this path at third level, spectral warriors appear when you enter a rage. We're gonna be doing that a lot. This is kind of the whole idea. The first creature you hit with an attack on your turn becomes the target of the warriors, which hinder its attacks. Until the start of your next turn, that target has disadvantage on any attack roll that isn't against you. And when the target hits a creature other than you with an attack, 
that creature has resistance to the damage dealt by the attack. The effect on the target ends early if your rage ends. Wait, we ain't gonna let that happen. That's baller. That's straight baller. What, do we need to burn a bonus or a reaction to use this? No, just hit somebody and you're golden. It works better than some of the things we're try <laughs> trying to pull off with the whip fighter, with the first whip tank. Mm, but it gets sweeter. Spirit shield. Sixth level, the guardian spirits that aid you can provide supernatural protection to those you defend. If you are raging and another creature you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to reduce that damage by 2d6. When you reach certain levels in this class, you can reduce the damage by more, 3d6 at 10th level and 4d6 at, 10th, at 14th level. Hey, why do they say 8? on the path features and then they changed their minds they said the six hmm damn it Jeremy Crawford says it's d6 that's okay that, that seems fine that still is good yeah this is from a little bit ago too I got little kids I don't keep up on that stuff like the day it comes out though Still cool. No worries. Vengeful ancestors at 14th level. Your ancestral spirits grow powerful enough to retaliate. When you use your spirit shield to reduce the damage of an attack, the attacker takes an amount of force damage equal to the damage that your spirit shield prevents. It's another awesome way we can kind of make up for, for damage this way. You don't... you. What am I thinking? You don't have to burn the feet to get sent on it anymore. You can do whatever race you want. You don't have to shoot for that at, at first level. You kind of get this now. Um, I guess you get it at third level. You kind of got to get going, but third level is nothing. Um, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. It does everything that we want to do. Keep that in mind. I've, I've wanted the the d12 hit dice I don't know why I wanted it so bad but it's like it's the only one that has the d12 why can't can we tank we, we're gonna tank we need to do it um, that's just too good though so if you wanted a way to do it with the barbarian there it is you're gonna have a absolutely sick AC especially if you take it to the to the top with that primal champion thing and unarmored defense um, that's gonna be good that's gonna be fun too. So there you go. There's another way. Another way to do the uh, whip tank. You can do the whip barbarian. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. I'll see you guys for the next one. Whip tank. You can do a no. Can you do a paladin whip tank? There's another one. There's a part three. There's a whip tank part three. And you can heal, you got lay on hands. Oh my god, the damage you can smite. Oh, holy shit, wait, no. We get fighting styles again. No. No. Uh uh. Ladies and gentlemen, there's another way to, to pull off the whip tank. <laughs> I don't know why I'm stuck on this. It just seems like such a fun idea to me. You're in the middle of combat. And you're staying out. You still have a shield, but you stay out of reach a little bit. And you just start like, cracking people in the face from afar. And you move on to F up their buddies. <laughs> and they can't do anything about it. If you're watching this one, I assume you're aware of what the whip tank is about. Um, you can do it with a paladin. You can totally do it with a paladin. Um, go human variant. Pick up the sentinel thing again. I really like that. I think you can really manipulate the battlefield, the movement, protect your your squishier characters, your casters and stuff with that one. Um, 
it's just nice because you finish your turn and you position yourself and it's like eh, that monster is it gonna leave it's gonna pay a price if he leaves pretty risky what you gonna do it just it has such an appeal to me like you're you're in combat but in a corner of your eye you're watching you're watching that one that's in your reach because you've got a whip and you're just you're gonna crack the whip and smack it so hard that it it can't walk anymore that turn you just I don't know it's gonna sting so bad that it just can't can't move from where you catch it maybe that's the DM in me but I just I love visually how cinematically visually how that's playing out in my mind just so funny down to business okay if you're the paladin okay all, all the normal dexterity stuff applies right if you want to do the defensive duelist thing you can too that's kind of nice then because I guess if you you either you get to use your reaction for one of the two if they're trying to leave your reach if you park yourself and there's that one that you don't want to get to your your softer buddies um, you either get to opportunity attack stop them in their tracks just throw that smite damage on them if you if you feel like it <laughs> just to just to spite them smite them to spite them maybe that's your new like you get it tattooed I don't know um, if you're the paladin in game tattooed I wouldn't get that as a real tattoo uh, anyway they're either gonna leave you get to make that opportunity attack and stop them use your reaction or if they come to attack you if you've also got that defensive duelist you use your reaction to buff up your AC um, I think that that makes the reaction choice a no-brainer too. I don't know why I was thinking that earlier, but you get lay on hands, right? And cure wounds. Like you can heal yourself up if you need to. If you're drawing all this damage, all of a sudden, one turn, boom, back up, no problem. You don't have to worry about somebody else covering for you. Fighting style. We get fighting styles again, so you can go protection fighting style. You can pick up that dueling fighting set. You don't need that as the paladin because you can you can sack spell slots to smite, and that's it's all you need. Defense, you can do that extra plus one to defense. I mean, you can you can do, follow your heart. They're all they're all gonna be cool. Oh, there you go. Oath of the Ancients. This probably doesn't get used a lot. Nature's Wrath. As an action, you can cause spectral vines to spring up and reach for creatures within 10 feet of you that you can see. The creature must succeed on a dex, a strength or dex save, its choice, or be restrained. That's the best. You need to try to tie up two that are trying to get to your soft teammates. Park yourself where you can opportunity attack the one. And then, as an action, channel divinity entangle the other that can be sweet Ooh, yeah ancients is the way to go level seven ancient magic lies so heavily upon you that it forms an eldritch ward you and friendly creatures within 10 feet of you have resistance to damage from spells that's just straight up you always have resistance to damage from spells that's sweet oh and then like at level 15 when you're reduced to yeah <laughs> i always love i always love this wording i think that um I think Acquisitions Incorporated, uh, they've also made this point too. But it's just, it is a funny wording. They're absolutely right. I think that's where I'm thinking of this from too. When you reduce to zero hit points and are not killed outright, you can choose to drop to one hit point instead. <laughs> you can, eh, <laughs> just choose. I would, I would consider that. Oath of Ancients, Paladin. There's a Whip Tank Paladin. That's how you would do it. So I guess I hope you like the the whip paladin too. Enjoy. There's there's a lot to be done with the whip tank. I hope this gives a lot of people some cool ideas because I think it, it can bring some fun tactics into a battle um, and just some some unique ways to to protect your your allies a little bit um, and have fun with something different, something really non cookie cutter. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys.